Students, welcome again to Bongu Masher Fred channel. The topic which we cover to today is the periodic table. That is the second topic. Uh, you can subscribe the channel and find the previous other topics covered in the same form. And we have over 1,000 lessons covered in this platform. Today, I want to look at the periodic table as there are over 100 elements so far discovered. I mean over 100. Scientists have tried to group them together in a periodic table. So the more than 100. So a periodic table, it is a horizontal and vertical arrangement of elements according to their atomic numbers. That is the plain definition of a periodic table. It is a horizontal and a vertical arrangement of elements according to their atomic numbers. This table was successfully arranged in 1913 by a British scientist, Henry Mosley, from the previous work of a Russian scientist Dmitry Mendrev. Mendrev is famous with biologist. Now, the horizontal arrangement forms what we call a period. So atoms in the same period have the same number of energy levels in their electronic structure. Remember in the previous lesson, we have seen how to write electronic structure or electronic uh, configuration or electronic arrangement. Now, the number of energy level in the electronic configuration of an element determines the period, the period to which an element belongs. Now, which period of the periodic table are the following isotopes or elements or atoms belong? Let us see. For instance, we have our first task. We have been given carbon. So carbon, the atomic number is six. Therefore, the electronic arrangement is two Four. Therefore, the number of energy level is one, two. So therefore, because it has two energy levels, it belongs to period two. Sodium has atomic number 11. Therefore, the electronic arrangement is two, eight, that's 10, then one, 11. So it has one energy level, Two, three. Therefore, because it has three energy levels, now the period is three. Then, if we have potassium that has one, two, three, four energy levels, the period is for meaning the number of energy levels determines the period. You count the number of energy levels, you get the period of that element. The vertical arrangement of elements forms a group. Atoms in the same group have the same number of outer energy electrons, very important, as per their electronic structure. For instance, the number of electrons in the outer energy level of an atom of an element determines the group to which the element is 
or the, in the periodic table. For instance, carbon has four number of electrons in the outermost energy levels, therefore it belongs to group four. Sodium has one, therefore it belongs to group one. Aluminium has three, that is two, eight, three, so it belongs to group three. Aluminium belongs to group three. Potassium, it has one in a one electron in the outermost energy levels, therefore it belongs to group one. Hydrogen as one, therefore by convention it belongs to group one. When an atom has a maximum number that is either eight in the outermost energy levels or two in the first energy level, it is said to have what we call a stable octet or a duplet. When an, an atom has no maximum number of electrons in its energy level, it is said to be unstable. Therefore, all stable atoms in group 8, all 18 of the periodic table, therefore, whenever you have an element in either of this group, it is stable, or it is having a stable octet or a duplet. All other elements which do not belong to group 8 or 18, we say they are unstable. Now, these unstable atoms or isotopes, they try to attain stability through chemical reactions. Actually, this gives us the reason why some atoms or some isotopes react is to attain stability or is to attain an octet or a duplet state. Now in this chemical reaction, it involves gaining or losing the outer electrons, what we term as electron transfer. When an electron transfer takes place, an ion is formed. We just form an ion whenever an electron transfer has taken place. An ion formed when a stable atom has either gained or donated electrons in its outermost energy level in order to attain stability. That's how an ion is formed when an unstable atom either gains or donates an electron to attain stability. Whether an atom gain or donates electrons depends on the relative energy required to donate or gain. So the decision to either gain or donate barely depends on the energy required to either donate or gain an extra electron. For instance, if you take an example of fluorine, it has an energy configuration of 27. It can donate the seven outer electrons to have a stable configuration of two or it can gain an extra electron to have a stable configuration of 2,8. So it has two possible scenarios.
However, gaming requires less energy and thus fluorine reacts by gaining one extra electron. Aluminium has an electronic configuration of 283, it can donate the three electrons to have a stable configuration of 28, or it can gain five extra electrons to have a configuration of 288. Donating requires less energy. Therefore, aluminium will react by donating its three outer electrons with less than four electrons to the outer energy level. A cation, therefore, once that has a form a cation, which has more protons, that is the positive, more than the electrons which are the negative. Generally metals usually form cations. Elements with more four electrons in the outermost energy level a cation therefore can be formed an ion can be formed. So an ion therefore has less protons that is less positive charge than electrons. So generally the metals, they usually form anions. Now the charge carried by an ion is equal to the number of electrons gained or donated or lost. For example, an ion formation of hydrogen, hydrogen, which is an atom, uh, it forms a monovalent cation whereby an, one electron is donated. So therefore, no electron remains. Aluminium does that by donating the three electrons. Sodium donates or loses one electron as per the equations. Magnesium donates two. Oxygen gains two. Nitrogen gains three. Phosphorus gains three, fluorine gains one, chlorine gains one. So this continues and then we form what we call an oxidation state whereby Now, in our next class, we are going to start from oxidation state. So please subscribe to this channel and find very good educative scientific videos to educate yourself in chemistry. Subscribe to Bongo Machel Fred YouTube channel for daily update of lessons in chemistry, physics, biology, with examples, with exams, with answers, and the simulations, and the real practical sessions. Thank you for subscribing. Share to your friends too.